Hello once again class. If you are followers of this channel, you know that this is my 1985 Rolls Royce Silver Spur. When it first came out of the showroom, it was $108,000 at the time. That was equivalent of being able to buy two and a half homes. Right now, this car in today's money would be approximately $260,000. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go through the features of this car and then, unlike Doug DeMauro, we are going to give it better than a Doug DeMauro score. We're going to give it a James score. My name is James Cameron. No, not this James Cameron, this James Cameron. I grew up in Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. I now live in Virginia. But before all of that, I had another passion. I loved Rolls Royces. Well, a few years ago, I accomplished my dream. My purchase, a 1985 Rolls Royce Silver Spur. And that's where the nightmare began. But it was through trial and error that I discovered that there was a way to actually purchase these cars and maintain them that could save the buyer of future cars like this thousands of dollars. Now that is the sound of power. Let's take a trip, come on, come along with me. I have now taken that knowledge and will now share it with you. My name is James Cameron, and I want to welcome you to the Rolls-Royce and Bentley University Buyer's Guide. Let's start class. Let's start from the very beginning. Let's talk about the hood ornament. It is called the Spirit of Ecstasy. It highlights every single Rolls-Royce that, generally speaking, has ever come down the showroom. And not only is this the most iconic car hood ornament in automotive history, so is this grill. If you look at the old roses from back at 1910 all the way up, the grill has remained the iconic part of this car. But let me tell you something else. It also has a sideline. That's right. It can be doubled as a hand harp, which I have done many, many times. Class, let's talk about the engine, shall we? This is a 6.75 liter V8. They don't even make V8s anymore. Everything is a V6 or a V12. Well, when this engine was first put into these cars, which by the way, only 2,300 of them were produced in 1985. This was the baddest boy on the block. Guess what? It did zero to 60 in nine and a half seconds. My goodness, what other speed do you need? Because it wasn't about speed. It was about how you got there. These cars were about comfort and taking you through large swaths of land in comfort with the seating and the wood and all of those things. You don't have a whole bunch of sensors in here because you want to know why? It was before sensors and as far as I'm concerned, it's better. I don't need a indicator to let me know that my tire is low in air. I can just go to the gas station and check it there. These cars are rock solid. These engines have been known to go for over half a million miles. That's right, 500,000 miles. Try and get that in an engine today. That's not even considered. 
and all these cars need is basic maintenance. Check the oil, check the fluids. Of course, every once in a while, you have to check other things. Just like any other car, you're gonna have to check the brakes, especially if you use them for a long period of time. Sometimes people use these cars and use them as a daily driver like I do, which means the maintenance has to be upgraded to fit that. But other people might just drive it on the weekends or drive it to and from dinner, and so it will sit. As a matter of fact, for those that do that, there is an automatic turn-off switch which came standard in these cars, and I'm gonna show you that right now. Look at this trunk. Or if you're from England, you would call it a boot. But I'm from Brooklyn. This is at least a three-body trunk. You could easily get three people in here, set up some cable, and you're good to go. So this is the kind of luxury that really doesn't exist today. What type of car? Tell me a Mercedes. Tell me BMW. Tell me anything that has a trunk or a boot, if you prefer, that would be large enough to fit three bodies like this. I don't think so. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. All right, class, let's talk about the interior. First thing, trees. I wouldn't go as far as saying a forest, but I'll say it. Literally a forest was sacrificed for all the wood that you see in this car. All the caps, as they are called, which are these here. And by the way, in another video, I have Susan Price, who redid all my caps. And she also redid my front panel to get it back to the way it was when it first came out the showroom. There are two things that I want to point out. These right here. These, of course, are your vents. Top and bottom ventilation systems. And by the way, Rolls-Royce also, to this day, has a top and a bottom ventilation system. Now, let me talk to you about Rolls-Royce. I don't pop the bonnet to check the oil. No! I turn it to the on switch, and there is a button right here. It's not even marked, because if you own a Rolls-Royce, you're supposed to know that it's there. And you just press it, and what would be your gas indicator now goes totally across to let you know that you have complete oil in your system. You don't sully your hands. No, not if you have a Rolls Royce. And look at the carpeting. Look at the Baker light. It's very thin. You don't get these type of features with modern cars. Absolutely not. And Rolls-Royce also has their own language. Rolls-Royces never, ever, ever break down. They fail to proceed. Besides that they never break down, they just fail to proceed. There's also other things about Rolls-Royces that are unique to Rolls-Royces. For example, every single Rolls-Royce has its own name. So, for example, your shadow, the original shadows came out in 1965 and went until 1975. Then came the shadow two. Those were from 75 to 80. Then they also had the longer wheelbase. 
just like this is the longer wheelbase for the Spirit. They call that the Wraith. And just like you had the Shadow 1, you had the Wraith, and then with the Shadow 2s, you had the Wraith 2s. This is a silver spur. It's the longer wheelbase to the Silver Spirit. Now, class, check this out. I'm 6'7". I weigh well over 250. We won't go further than that. But look at all the leg room that I have. Not only that, look at my headroom. I'm 6'7". You can't find cars today that could fit someone like me so comfortably. So if it could fit me, just imagine how it would fit you and you could have a party back here. Check this out. You've got a party tray. You can have all kinds of stuff happening. And if you're smart, you would have changed the stereo system and changed the speakers so you can have real nice surround sound and really, really be the new kid on the block. Now this was an era in the 80s, where unfortunately, and I will say it that way, people smoked. So you know what? They are ashtrays all around the car, even on the passenger side, and a separate, and by the way, they don't call it cigarette lighters, because if you're in a Rolls Royce, you're not going to smoke a cigarette. You're going to smoke a cigar. So these are cigar lighters. That's right. And once again, you have nothing but plush carpet. You have a pullout, which, by the way, also has a compartment. Now, like I said, tons of leg room, tons of head room, wood all over the place, an ashtray, not that you're going to use it, but as my father used to say, it's better to have and not need than need and don't have. And by the way, all the trim is actual metal, not plastic made to look like metal. Everything here is metal. And let me tell you one last thing that you ain't going to find in them new cars. A grab handle. Now, this actually reminds me when I was in New York and we used to ride the subway and they used to have the handles. So for me, it's very nostalgic. All right, let's figure this out and give it a James score. First, the engine. This is a 6.75 liter V8. It's a V8. You can't find these engines anymore. I give it a 10, and I'll tell you why. When I turn that crank and that engine rumbles, the whole block knows that I'm getting in my car and I'm getting ready to drive. When that engine turns, my neighbor says, oh, that's James starting his Rolls Royce. So I give it a 10 just for notoriety. Now, on styling, I give that a 10, and I'll give you why. When this car comes down the block, you know it's a Rolls Royce, not only because of its distinctive grill, and also because of the spirit of ecstasy, but look at this. You can't find this styling anymore. Even the new Rolls Royces, you gotta look twice. You don't have to look twice for this. Now. Let's talk about what Doug DeMauro talked about, which is acceleration. Well, this car don't have that. It was never meant for acceleration. I even tested it myself. This car, which by the way, weighs three and a half tons, got from zero to 60 in about nine and a half seconds, which by the way, I think is pretty good. But that was not what this car was about. 
It was about to accelerate you smoothly and efficiently. It was about better hydraulics, which hugged the road, gave you better brakes, gave you better suspension. That's what these cars were about. It wasn't about how fast you got there. It was about how comfortable and how smooth you got there. That's what these type of cars, known also as land yachts, were all about. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is truly, truly a classic. So, for acceleration, guess what? I give it a 10. Why? Because it was never meant to be a fast accelerant car. Ride, nothing is gonna beat it. I give it a 10. Efficiency. This car can get over half a million miles. Tell me a car right now that can give you half a million miles with very little maintenance and basic upkeep. Comfort, I give that a 10. Lastly, styling. It is absolutely unique. I give that a 10. So take that, Doug DeMauro. You might have Doug DeMauro and you're gonna give it a Doug score. Well, I gave this car a chain score.